that final day of days, his voice shall bid me rise again. Unending joy, unceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart, to stand on earth, my flesh restored, and not a stranger, but a friend. Behold my Saviour and my Lord. In life, all have cherished the gospel of Christ. May now, my Christ, now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, all have received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And now we begin with the presentation of the life gifts. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Olive, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had now disappeared, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city of the new Jerusalem coming down from the God out of heaven, as, be as beautiful as all bride, all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud, loud voice call from the throne. You see the city, here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole creation new, he said. I will give water from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. It is the rightful inheritance of 
the one who proves victorious, and I will be his God, and he'll be son to me, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, my life is already being poured away as libation, and this time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father. For well, that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I begin by thanking such a large crowd who have attended today and people I think standing out there in the rain as well. Uh, it's good of you to come and all those who uh, supported us over the last two days. It was an enormous crowd and that uh, speaks volumes uh, about Olive herself. Uh, and also those who have travelled a distance. There are a few people who have travelled a distance be with us today and I thank them for coming and making the effort to come and of course our minstrels there from that exotic place, Pines Pass. So they're all, thank them for coming today and helping us out. And of course, Father Maliki, whom you know, and Father Porrick, uh, you know as well, of course, I hardly need to introduce them either. But the gospel today, the gospel proclaimed today is also proclaimed next Sunday too. And it contains a prayer of thanksgiving and an invitation from Jesus to share in his divine life the love and intimacy of the Holy Spirit. It is an eternal space of rest and peace for the overburdened. It is heaven. And accepting that invitation is a lifelong journey of discipleship and discovery, learning to imitate his humility and gentleness. All of that, just 53, was certainly overburdened by sickness and ready to accept that invitation to God's peace. Today, in this Holy Mass, in this Eucharist, in this, this prayer of thanksgiving, we commend her to God's mercy and rest. And we can trust in God's mercy and the power in that mercy. She suffered much, but never with complaint. To meet her, you'd never know she was ill. She lived in a beautiful place, and she loved the beauty of flowers. So we are very happy to give her into the care of the author of that beauty. She herself tried to capture these moments with her photography and leaves a legacy of happy memories that someone will have to archive in the years ahead little hint in that place. She defied medical opinion with determination and positivity. She was a mother who worked hard and asked for nothing. She saw her two sons married and a third in danger of. <laughs> her greatest joy was, I think, little Tommy, or Tomo in Australian, if you want to translate it. Even her little dog, Annie, always by her side, had to take a back seat to Tommy. And all on these happy occasions, she made sure her outfits matched her colourful selection of weeks. She graduated from Uri College, receiving her certificate under the table for safety reasons, during a security alert, and she was no stranger to the stage with her singing. School productions at the Bush included Calamity Jane, but perhaps her greatest hit was Rory the Rooster. <laughs> Demo records were made, and you'll probably hear some of those later. And she even had her own following at gigs. She was a big hit on Route 66, after singing at a bar in Shamrock, Texas, I'm told they were going to change the name of that bar to Olive's Bar. So she certainly made an impact. And the, but the vision of John in our first reading gives us hope for what God has planned for his faithful. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past is gone. And again, I will give water to, from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. 
It is the rightful inheritance of the one who proves victorious. And St. Paul in our second reading had a sense of his impending death and his eternal future. The time has come for me to be gone. All that is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me. God does not lie in his word. So it is with hope and thanksgiving we give her over to the care of the good shepherd that he may lead her to his kingdom. Now, could I ask you all to stand for our prayers of the faithful? <clears throat> Father, Father, through his Son, through the darkness of Calvary, to the glory of the resurrection. We are confident that he will bring us too through the darkness of death to his kingdom of light and peace. Let us turn now to him with our petitions. All have shared in the passion of Christ. May she now share in his risen glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious to hear us. For those who mourn Olive's death, we pray for her family and that they may be comforted by the knowledge that after all her pain, she is now at peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who suffer, that they may bear their pain with Christ-like love and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who work for the sick and suffering, that they may have a kind heart and gentle hands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all here present, that we may remember that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory which is in waiting for us in the next. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And I will have the offer tree procession, the gifts. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Olive, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy. You are holy indeed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly <coughs> implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. <coughs> for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Thank you so much. And thank you, yes, we like to rest. Thank you, thank God for our Father and our God. It's a Joseph Christ's in all things. Learn to any event when it takes you to the May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Eamon and Michael our bishops, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant of whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we stand. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a sign of peace as we feel comfortable with. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death give life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <coughs> Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Olive may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hold on for a few moments. We'll be back now for the prayers of commendation.
And now before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. <coughs> And the response, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to our aid, hasten to meet our angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself, may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Holland in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, we will rise with them on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. In peace, let us take our sister to our place of rest.
Thank you.